Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. As this series continues through its final episodes, this is something you'll be seeing more often. Big time jumps as our featured missions become fewer and further between. In this episode, we'll be returning to the Arm E2 in its effort to finally finish off that D-Class asteroid contract. But we'll start with another mission that has also had its share of misadventures. This is Minmus Driller 2, which has this contract to acquire 400 units of ore from the surface of Minmus. There has certainly been a few stops and starts to get to this point in the mission, which traces its roots back to episode 105 when Minmus Driller 1 was deployed by the Columbia. Unfortunately, upon landing, I learned that the smaller drills were incapable of extracting ore from the resource-poor Minmus. That led to version 2. But it had its own problems with occluded engine exhaust, which resulted in an overall asymmetrical thrust, which made it very difficult to hold attitude during acceleration. That was later fixed by Gene Lee and the crew of the Karayan 1, with a little help from Kerbal Attachment Systems. So hopefully, we've got all our problems dealt with, and the rest of this will go smooth as silk. Minmus isn't the best source for ore. The entire surface is either 1, 2, or 0% ore. Compare this to the moon's northern basin, where we have been the past couple of episodes, which has a 10% concentration. I mean, I guess this kind of makes sense, but in a way it doesn't. I mean, if you think of ore as some kind of mineral, then sure, the moon is clearly more rocky, but if you think of what we use ore for in the game, namely making chemical rocket fuel and oxidizer, well, I don't think anything quite beats plain old water in that department. One of the reasons scientists and engineers are interested in finding out exactly where there may be water on our Earth's moon is because of its potential as a resource, and Minmus, which absolutely looks like a big minty snowball, should be full of water. Oh well. At least it gives me plenty of options as to where to put down. I chose this nice spot in the lesser flats. And... Touchdown! We are here. Alright. We'll deploy this uh, other Gigantor here. I had that retracted during... Oh, this is always so confusing with the Kerbal Interstellar Extended stuff added in there. There it goes. I had that retracted during the, um, during the descent in case I clipped it on the ground or something. And we'll also extend the radiators because drilling does generate quite a bit of heat. But I think we are ready to begin our drilling process. So drill number one and deploy. There it goes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, don't fall over. No, I don't want you to fall over. Okay, get the other one down. <laughs> Oh my gosh, these drills are having some trouble punching through the ice. <laughs> oh, we're lifting the landing gear right off the ground. Oh, this seems to be settling down. But it's actually sitting on the drills, not on the gear. Okay, let's uh, let's start harvesting some ore here. Oh my god, which one of these is it? There's all this extra stuff from Kerbal Stellar Extended there to start service harvest. Ooh, a little bit of jiggling going on. Let's get the other one going. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this isn't exactly stable. Fortunately, uh, time warping seemed to have fixed this problem. I managed to get the time warping and that sort of turned off the physics and then it was able to harvest without jiggling all over the place. Oh, I got a message. My high-resolution scan of Moho is done. Let's take a look at it. Oh, nice. Oh, what's that big purple up here? Oh, shoot, I'm losing it. There was a ton of ore up there. Let's get the ore overlay back up again. A very sweet map, though, but uh, not a lot of ore, except for here's a little pocket right there of purple, but up towards the top left, what is that? The Northern Sinkhole, 53% ore. Holy crap. 
Taking advantage of this would be a good way to support a land and return mission. Anyway, after four minmus days of time warping, with having to shut down every night and then restart again the next morning, there it is, contract complete. That's it. Oh, it's so nice not to have to take this anywhere. So we'll just shut everything down. But this isn't the only action happening around Minmus. The Arm E2, which captured its D class asteroid about Kerb in the last episode, is now, finally, in the home stretch of this contract. All that's left is to get a capture about Minmus, and this contract is at last done. It's about a 91 second burn. It'll likely take me longer than that because of the wobble issues that I've had with this vessel. Just keeping it on the maneuver node is challenging. I won't be able to go anywhere near full thrust. Oh, I think I'm close enough now to periapsis. Let's start. All I'm interested in is the capture. This 93 meter per second burn leaves me in a high eccentricity orbit, but I don't care. I could clean it up after the capture, but I actually have some other plans that I will be getting to soon enough. The key to this is keeping the thrust fairly low and not to overcorrect. That's why I'm doing everything manually. If the thrust is too high and the wobble gets bad, then just being a bit off from pointing at the center of mass of the asteroid can result in a torque that can have you losing attitude control. That all said, I don't have all the time in the world for this. I need to get this done. I'm just getting to my periapsis now. I'm almost halfway through the burn. This is looking all right. By this point, I've given up staying on the node. And I'm just keeping it in the vicinity of the retrograde vector. Whoa, 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 camera change. That's a good sign. Come on. Come on, contract. Go green. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's drifting off of retrograde. I'm having trouble holding it on there. Oh, wait, the contract's green. Okay, cut the engines. That's it. It's done. <laughs> Finally. All right, contract complete. Well. Let's go take a look at our orbit here. Oh yeah, that is pretty crappy, but I don't care. Ooh, my periapsis is only six kilometers. I'll have to fix that once I'm back up at apoapsis, but that'll be easy enough. Now this is my third asteroid capture. I've got an A-class, a B-class, and now a D-class. But the other two are connected together, forming the foundation of Yoi Station in orbit about the moon. And it seems only right that this one should join the party. However, I only have 128 meters per second left in this vehicle, which clearly isn't enough. Well, that's where this comes in. This is just another Arm E, the Arm E3 now. But it is the only vehicle I've designed that uses Hydrolox as a propellant, which is what the KSP Interstellar Extended Nerva engines require. Now this is a cryogenic fuel that needs to be kept very cold, which requires a lot of electricity, which right now is not being generated. My solution is two fuel cells attached to the launch clamps. I'll turn this one on. There we go. And I got one here on the other side. Turn this one on too. And yes, our electricity drain is negative, meaning we are generating enough power to prevent boil off of the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Excellent. I find it kind of stupid that I have to do this. The vessel should not be on internal power now, but oh well. I can time warp now to my launch window without having to worry about my payload losing propellant. Oh, it's been a while since I've used KOS. Uh, copy path slash launch, yeah, I guess. Oh crap, path doesn't exist. I actually had to go look this up, it's been so long. I forgot you need a zero in the path. Okay, okay, it's working. Run launch minus 680. That would be the inclination that I want and the altitude of the resulting, oh. I should be getting a countdown, nothing's happening here. 
I, I don't know. Okay, let's try this again. Launch minus 680. Well, I'm getting some sort of weird errors. File not found. I don't think so. I mean, I've been using the same script for a long, long time, and I certainly haven't been moving the file around. Well, after a few more tries at this, I began worrying about missing this launch window. So I attributed it to a software problem that I'll just have to figure out later and just hit the space bar. Ah! Wait, 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 wait! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, what the hell? Oh, I think my throttle was off! Of course my throttle was off! my KOS script that throttles up. Oh man! Well there's something I've yet to do in this series. Destroy the launch pad. Well Elon would be proud. Well, let's see how uh, Kerbal Construction Time handles this. Well the cost is only 90,000. That's not so bad. Well I think it just happened instantaneously. Let's check KCT down here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that launch pad reconditioning, that's the normal amount of time it takes to recondition the launch pad. It's not factoring into it how long it would take to do repairs. It's clearly, doesn't matter. KCT clearly doesn't anticipate its users doing something this stupid often enough to warrant working it into their mod. Oh well, I'll just push out another one and try again later. So, 27 days later, this is now a different play session and whatever issues KOS was having seemed to have sorted itself out. Now that we are disconnected from the fuel cells, you can see we are losing electricity. Though I have a lot of batteries, I won't start getting boil off problems unless the electricity goes down to zero. Though if you take a look, notice that we are losing electricity less and less quickly. I do have a theory about that. Before the unfortunate incident with the previous launch, I was explaining the electricity woes of this vessel. Although the boosters are chemical, the vessel is nuclear and uses cryostatic fuel, which needs to be kept cold. This requires electricity, which the reactors in the Nervous should provide ample amounts of once they are staged. Activating them on the launch pad didn't seem to help. You may be wondering then, how did I operate the previous two versions of this vessel before I came up with the fuel cell workaround? Basically, I cheated. After achieving orbit, I would edit the save file to give back what had boiled off. I did explain this back when I launched the E1, but that workaround always bothered me a bit. Especially considering the boiled off fuel meant that the payload was much lighter than it would otherwise be. That's why I came up with this fuel cell fix. Now if we take a look at our electric charge once again, you will see we have just begun to generate electricity. It's been building all the way through this launch. Uh, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking perhaps those Nerva engines, the reactors in them, just need time to sort of warm up and now the uh, they're actually warming up and generating electricity for me. Does that make sense? I mean this really puzzled me for the longest time and I'm only just thinking about this as I'm doing this narration. Of course who knows, it could be just some sort of inexplicable bug too. And if there is any kind of theme to the last few episodes, it has been inexplicable bugs. To be fair to the game, this save file dates back to 1.0, and some of the mods I've been using don't even have an official 1.2 release. Honestly, it's rather surprising it isn't more buggy than it is. And now we are losing electricity again. Oh hang on, could that be heat? Could it be that the cooling system has to work harder now? Well that would be wild if Interstellar modeled that. Now I'm actually producing this at the same time that 1.4, it's just been dropped and the DLC will be coming out soon. I'm really, really excited for it, but there is absolutely no way that this series is going to go to 1.4. I am not touching a goddamn thing. <laughs> this thing is, this whole build is hanging by a thread and I don't want to muck with it in the least. Okay, that is LKO. 
So hopefully we'll be generating power once we've activated the nervous. Nope. <laughs> I've ran into this before. If I just leave and then return to refresh the vessel. Oh wait, let's just get on the right vessel. Ta-da! Yeah, now we're generating power. I, I don't have an explanation. And none of my liquid hydrogen or oxygen has boiled away. We are good to send this thing on its way to Minmus. And it was while I was setting up the injection to rendezvous with the E2 that I found this. Refinery? What the heck is this? Yeah, I clearly have it in an orbit meant to rendezvous with Minmus Station down there. Weird. Okay, here's the E2. But I really need to check on what the heck this refinery is once I'm done my injection. Oh, I remember this thing! It was designed to harvest and refine ore from asteroids. But I was disappointed with how little resources it got out of asteroid Yoy about the moon. So I sent it to Minmus with the idea that it would attach to Minmus Station where it, in conjunction with the Minmus Driller, would become a Minmus-based refinery. Unfortunately, the driller doesn't have the necessary Delta V to get it to Minmus Station once it was loaded with ore. Nor does it have a Convertitron. But the refinery does. And it has 533 meters per second of Delta V in it. If I could get it down to the driller, perhaps I could hook the two together. My idea was that I could use the claw to attach to the top of the driller. But then I saw that the top of the driller was a structural girder with antennas and solar panels attached to it. Not exactly the kind of thing I want to hook the claw to. However, the driller does have a docking port, but it's on the bottom of it. So I'll use the claw to attach to Mimis' surface, and then try and dock the driller on top of it. But it seems the claw doesn't like attaching to the surface of Mimis. By now I was determined to make these two and change plans again. I laid down the refinery with its docking port facing the driller, even using the engines a bit to shuffle it closer. Taking advantage of Mimis's low gravity and KSP's crazy strong reaction wheels, I put the driller on its side with the idea of shuffling it over. Oh dear, the RCS isn't strong enough to move the driller. Okay, plan B, or is it E by now? Can I worm the refinery over? All right, so let's move the back end here towards the left. And then we'll try and shuffle the front end over. See if we can not sort of shuffle our way over there. Uh, oh geez, no, I don't think this is working. <laughs> All right, uh, plan F, plan F. We are going to spin this right around the other way. And uh, then we are going to go ass over tea kettle. That's going to be the plan. <laughs> end over end, we'll make our way over there. So up, 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 up. And yeah, let's turn it a little bit. I got to be a little careful for the solar panels. They're not indestructible by any means. And these ones won't retract. Whoa, whoa, rolling it the wrong way. Roll the other way. There we go. Nice and gently. <laughs> you know, for a series where I'm promising to finish things off, I'm sure spending my share of time playing around with vessels that have already completed their mission. Okay, we're closer. Let's do that again. We'll spin around one more time. And then flip over one more time. It's a good thing the game developers have never heard of a little something called gimbal lock. <laughs> I don't think this would work with reaction wheels in real life at all. Oh, I think we're a little close. Okay, just be careful. We'll set that as a target, though. Uh, no, we are too close. That's okay. Let's 
kind of lay it down here nice and gently. Oh, we're hooked. We get it down lower. Hooked on that antenna. Come on, I just want to get it down. Oh, okay, what well, heck with it. Let's just go to the other vessel here. Let's shuffle it a little bit forward. We'll use the main engines here and just kind of push forward a little bit. There we go. Let's get a good view of this. Okay. Forward. Oh! It's not so much moving forward as it is kind of blowing <laughs> the other vessel back. It's actually kind of lining it up too at the same time. I think the exhaust gases are hitting that solar panel. A bit of a sail there. All right, that's pretty good. Now let's see if we can not line these up a little bit. Shuffle a little bit to the left. Come on, just gotta nudge them a little, a little bit out of the way. I can see um, this docking port is higher than the other docking port, and that's because we're resting on that dish antenna. But I want to get these lined up first, and then I'll lower the antenna. Oh, I'm getting so close. Oh, I'm not sure this is serving any purpose. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these resources, but by gum, this is personal now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Line. Okay, let's get that antenna. Oh, I'm on the wrong vessel. Go back. And let's bring this antenna down. Oh, it's so close. Come on, just kind of get in there and nudge and come on. Yeah. Yes! 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 <laughs> That's it! Oh, this whole contraption serves no purpose. I have no idea what I want to do with these resources, but god damn it. <laughs> I want to get these two vessels up to Mimis Station now. So, we got to do some refinering, so we will get the radiators out because that generates heat. We'll deploy whatever solar panels we can. And we got a Digantor down here at the end, and uh, oh, 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 no, 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 this was a bad one. <laughs> okay, uh, no, no, let's get that one back down again. I cannot believe that solar panel's not breaking. Back down, back down, back down. Uh, we have other solar panels. Yeah, there's ones over here. These ones would be better ones to use. <laughs> anyway, we will start the refining process. Start uh, making some liquid fuel and oxidizer. Hopefully enough to be able to get both of these two vessels up to min station. But you know that's going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.